Hello friends from me and little baby Finley May. Finley is currently almost four weeks old, so we are currently in the thick of that newborn phase, although I think we survived what I think is the hardest portion of the newborn phase, and that's the first four weeks. The first weeks to bring home a baby, no matter how prepared you are or how ready you think you are, it flips your life upside down a little bit. Nights are bleeding into days as they're figuring out how to sleep outside of the womb, and you're suddenly losing hours of your life to feeding this baby, not to mention if you were the mom who carried and delivered the baby, you're also dealing with postpartum recovery on top of all of that. Overall, I have found this newborn phase a lot easier my second time around. Yes, I'm certainly more exhausted doing it with a two-year-old running around, but I found it to be easier and honestly more enjoyable this time, and I think it's due to the fact that one, I've done it once before, and two, I have some little tips and tricks up my sleeve that have made it honestly just a lot easier on me. And in today's video, I wanna share some of those tips with you in hopes to help you with the newborn phase, not only to make it survivable, but to make it truly enjoyable. Because it is true what they say, they do grow up quick. All right, my first tip is to lower your standards. And I mean this sort of as a joke. What I really mean is like, give yourself grace and accept that you can't do as much. Here's the thing, when a baby arrives, you are just not going to be able to do as much as you did before the baby was here. You now have hours of your life that's dedicated solely just to like feeding this baby and taking care of this baby. And literally every time you sit down to try to do anything else like film a YouTube video, they're gonna wake up from their nap. So I personally am somebody who like weighs my self-worth on my productivity. So this obviously was a really hard lesson for me, especially the first time around. And I feel like the second time around, it's been a lot easier because I was prepared and I really went into this newborn phase knowing that I was not going to be able to get nearly as as much done. Like it really lowered my standards for what I should be able to accomplish in a day and in a week so that I was mentally prepared for it. Some of the tips that I have upcoming in this video are going to help you sort of deal with having less time and still getting things, some things done that you need to get done with this less time. But in general, it's just best to go into the newborn phase knowing that you're not going to be able to get nearly as much done. Like whatever you think you're going to be able to get done with a newborn, cut it in half and then like cut that in half again. And then maybe one more time and you're there. All right, tip number two is a mindset that's going to help you with what I just mentioned in tip number one, and that is that this is temporary. Normalcy in your life will return. I know it's really hard to believe it when you're in the thick of the newborn phase and every time you try to sit down to do any work, the baby needs you, the baby needs to be fed, the baby wakes up, the baby is fussy, but your productivity and normalcy in your life does return. I think something that has helped me a lot in motherhood is understanding that in life, we just go through seasons. And each season has its pros and it has its cons. And just like every season that we go through in life, it doesn't last forever and it doesn't come back around again. Babies don't keep, you know, eventually they're sleeping through the night and they're walking and they're talking. And like I said, I think a big reason the newborn phase has been easier for me this time around is because I'm able to really grasp this concept so much more this time because I've gone through the newborn phase once already and I know that life and normalcy will return. But I also know this newborn phase will not. I'm only gonna get a few short months to snuggle this little newborn body and to wipe away the milk dribble from her cheek and see those tiny, adorable little newborn stretches. And I'm just gonna stop there because if I keep going, my postpartum hormones are gonna get me crying in this video, which is not what I'm going for. What I'm trying to say is it allows me to be a little bit more present in the newborn phase. And when I feel anxious because I'm stuck under a sleeping baby and I wanna get up and complete a chore or I wanna do some work on my to-do list, I'm able to remember that this is temporary. All right, tip number three, we're gonna move on to some more concrete tips and not just mindsets. And the first one is to create small daily goals every single day. Part of the reason the newborn phase can be so hard is everything is upside down and it feels like there's just so much to do and you have no idea when you're ever gonna do it, which leaves you feeling very overwhelmed. So what I love to do every single morning or the night before when I'm up nursing is to jot down three to six goals for the next day. And these are things I really wanna accomplish. And in those first few weeks, these can and should be very simple. Like take a shower, do a load of laundry, bring the recycling out to the bin. Prioritize the top few things that are really important to you to do that day. You're often spending your day caring for this little human and the minute they finally let you put them down and you quietly tiptoe away in hopes not to wake them, you find yourself with a few free minutes and then you draw a complete blank on what you wanted to do and you spend this valuable time just like doing nothing, wondering what to do with your life. 
But when you have little goals written down, it's a lot easier to take action on them because you've identified what you want to accomplish that day. So it makes it way easier to do it. And I'm actually really excited because I just published a new printable on my Etsy shop and it is a complete planning and survival bundle for new moms. It has tons of helpful planners and schedules that I use myself all the time as a mom with a newborn into the toddler phase to stay on task and feel more productive. And one of the pages inside of it is this planner that you see. I use these little daily planners religiously with Finley so I can stay on top of what I really need to do. At the top I have a spot where I write down my top goals for that day and then I have a spot to jot down some extra tasks or chores if I have extra time. I have like don't forgets so if I need to call the doctor or I have an appointment to go to. A memory bank where I like to write down little things I want to remember from the day just like a moment or an event. And then I also have a mantra spot where I write down mantras to keep me going that day. So again, this is available inside my planning and survival bundle for new moms, available on Etsy, and I'll put a link to that down below. But because I like you guys so much, I will offer this just daily planner for free if you want just this sheet, and I have a link to that down below as well. All right, tip number four, let's talk about keeping the house tidy. Obviously, I told you in tip number one, the first thing you have to do is lower your standards. Your house is not gonna be as tidy as it was before you had a newborn in it. You're probably going to go more days than usual between mopping your kitchen floor. A mystery stain is gonna appear on your pantry door and it's gonna take you six to 10 business days before you remember to clean it. But remember, again, normalcy will return, your home will be tidy again. This is just a phase. That being said, I find that identifying a few key spots in my home to focus on keeping tidy has really helped. You wanna focus on key spots that are crucial to the flow of your day, things that when they are tidy, makes your life easier. So let me give you an example. One thing I really focus on keeping tidy is my kitchen sink and the counters around it. And the reason is when this area is messy or cluttered, it makes daily life for me harder. It's harder to feed my toddler or whip up a quick meal for myself or my husband when the kitchen sink is full or or the counters are a mess. So in the kitchen, I focus on keeping the sink and the counters clean and clear, but let go of other things like daily mopping of the floor or wiping my appliances clean every night. I identify things that impact the flow of my day. So another thing that I find really helpful is keeping clothes tidy. So this is dresser drawers, laundry, etc. Mornings can be tricky enough and the last thing I need is a disaster closet where I can't find my comfy leggings and warm sweatshirt that I wear every day as a new mom or I can't find something clean to put my toddler in. So I find that focusing my effort on keeping clothes at least semi-organized and laundry mostly done, it's worth my time a thousand times more than maybe using that time to deep clean the rugs or organize the pantry or clean my baseboards. Again, it's just about identifying a few main places in your home where when they're tidy, it makes your day run smoother. Then focus on those areas and allow yourself the freedom of letting go of the rest for now. All right, my next tip is to utilize online resources. I always say having a baby in this day and age has its pros and its cons. In some ways it's a lot harder because there's just so much information out there on parenting and on babies and most of it is conflicting. And that as a mom can be really hard to sort of sift through it and choose like what's right, what feels the best for you. But at the same time, we also do have all this information available to us where 30 years ago, you maybe just had a few parenting books and your pediatrician and that was it. And listen, I'm not saying the advice from your pediatrician isn't helpful because you should always run everything past them when you are unsure. But they're also doctors and they're there to help with the health and well-being of your baby and they don't always have a vast array of resources on things that could be helpful to the mom of a new baby like sleeping tips or swaddling or breastfeeding support and so on. Personally I have found some really amazing online resources that have helped me so much as the mom of a newborn both the first time around and this time around as well. And sometimes they're helpful simply because they make me feel less alone. Sometimes they're helpful because they're actually offering practical, helpful advice on something that I'm struggling with, with my baby. But the point is, that I'm trying to make here, is that if you're struggling with something, don't feel like you need to struggle alone. All right, my next tip I'm actually modeling for you, and that is baby wearing, is life-changing. Sometimes wearing your newborn is the only chance you are going to have to have free hands for 45 minutes when they are being particularly clingy. It can be hard on us when our babies are feeling super clingy because we still sometimes just have to get things done, especially when you have other kids. But also our babies are designed to be clingy to us, kind of how they're like biologically designed. So baby wearing allows them to be near you, which is what they need, totally developmentally normal for them to want to be right on you, but also gives you a little bit of freedom with your hands. I have a couple different baby wearers that I use. This is the Baby Bajoran Mini. 
I am obsessed with this. It is hands down the best newborn baby carrier that I have ever used. Next tip is to get white noise because it's going to be your best friend. I'm actually always surprised how many people still haven't caught on how amazing white noise is for newborns. But when your baby's in the womb, it's actually really loud in there. They hear the sound of like blood rushing through your body 24 seven. And people have said it's equivalent to hearing the sound of a vacuum cleaner running all day long. So the real world is actually kind of quiet for them. So white noise during naps and nighttime sleep really helps prolong their sleep. And I also highly suggest you get yourself a portable white noise maker too. The one I have is like 30 bucks. It's amazing for running errands and for car rides. It can help little ones just take better on the go naps. All right, my next tip is to download a couple books on tape on your phone because you're going to spend a lot of time nursing and feeding and holding and rocking a baby. And this sometimes can be a little bit boring. And if you're sleep deprived, it's gonna be really exhausting. And so having a few good books on tape can really make these moments a lot more enjoyable. You find yourself less likely to be counting down how much longer until this baby finally falls asleep already and actually sort of enjoying the quiet time. My husband and I actually both gifted ourselves a pair of AirPods when Finley was born. And it really just makes that quiet time a lot more enjoyable. It makes you feel like you're not just like sitting in the dark all alone. All right, our next tip is to accept help. Listen, I'm one of those I'd rather just do it myself kind of people. Anybody else? Sometimes I honestly think it's easier to do things myself than to ask someone else to do it or explain to them how to do it. I can also be very stubborn and I just want things done my way. But I will tell you in motherhood that you need to let some of that go. Let people help you. People want to help, so accept it. On that note, a little thing I like to do is keep a list of things that would be helpful. Often people want to help, but they don't always know what's needed. They'll say, if I can do anything, let me know. So keep a little running list of things that would be helpful throughout the day. So when someone texts or someone calls or offers, you know what you need. Again, this doesn't need to be anything phenomenal. It can be just, can you drop off my favorite Starbucks drink? Or can you come by and visit for 30 minutes because I need to throw in some laundry? Or hey, if you're running to the dump, can you come grab my spare boxes that I have in the garage? Remember that some people are gonna wanna help and they're gonna offer help, but they won't always know what to give you. All right, our next tip is to use a brain dump. The first few months of having a newborn, it's really easy to get overwhelmed by the amount you want and need to do, but the lack of time that you're gonna have to do it. And my best hack for dealing with this is what I call brain dump, and it works especially great with newborns. So you just sit down, literally dump everything that's on your brain onto a sheet of paper everything that you want or need to get done, everything that you're thinking about doing, the steps that you need to do it, just keep writing until there's nothing left in your brain. And the process of just writing it down can help you take it out of your brain and basically start to close like the 800 tabs that you have open. And then once it's on paper, it is so much easier to prioritize it and decide which ones you have to get done, which ones you can let go, which ones you can save for another day, maybe which ones you can have somebody else do for you. The point is once you have taken them out of your brain and put them onto paper, it's a lot easier to just sort of organize, prioritize, and sort of tackle these tasks. And if you're using my earlier tip of having a few goals for each day of the week, you will find that you can use this brain dump to decide what those goals are gonna be. All right, tip number seven is to adopt daily and or weekly mantras and or motivational quotes. And I know what you're thinking, motivational quotes, really Cali, but truth is there actually is some science here. Studies have been done that show that people who see motivational images or words before a task are typically more successful and have a higher feeling of being able to accomplish something. The thought is that when the concept of achievement is in your environment, it can double your willingness to keep working. I find that little mantras to use during the day really have helped me a lot in motherhood. When my son went through his four month sleep regression, we had a few very hard weeks and I remember literally chanting, this is temporary, as I rocked him for countless hours. And it was just this little mantra, it kept me going. The good thing is there's mantras for like all parts of motherhoods and for all types of people. So whatever kind of parent you are. And my newborn planner bundle that I mentioned that's on Etsy actually comes with a list of a ton of amazing quotes and mantras to help you through motherhood. But just find some that really resonate with you and you can either stick them up on your wall, put them on the background to your phone, literally chant them in your head during the hard parts of motherhood. And I honestly find that it helps. A lot. All right guys, my final tip is that you cannot ruin your baby. You're not holding them too much, you're not wearing them too much, you're not creating bad sleep habits, you're not laying the foundation for a spoiled child, you are not doing anything that is ruining your baby. In the earlier tip, I think it was tip number five, I talked about all the amazing resources that are available online and it's true. They are amazing, they can be extremely helpful, they can make you feel like you are not so alone in this, but again, 
like I mentioned, they can also be extremely conflicting and really confusing as a new mom and make you feel like you're making the wrong choices. So my final tip is just to remember that no matter what methods or techniques you want to choose as a parent, they are your choice. You were chosen to be this baby's mom. Nobody else was chosen to be this baby's mom. Trust your gut and your instincts and follow the things that feel right to you, not the things that your friends say or online says are the right thing to do. All right, my friends, that does it. Those are some of my best tips for, for surviving the newborn phase. Funny, I filmed those clips when I'm wearing her when she was like four weeks old and now she's almost eight weeks old. So that's how long it took me to make one video, which is another just little insight to newborn life. But anyways, that does it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it a little bit helpful and maybe insightful and helps you just make some mind shift changes. And maybe you learn some little tips and tricks to make the newborn phase a little bit easier. But this is where I will leave you. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.